And so I just got to get to three out of the five. Right, you just... <laughs> I just need to get three out of the five, and I do that. I have to say, too, you know, Dean could, obviously, owning the newspaper, being the publisher, he could... Uh, have any editorial written he wants any day. I know that's the same thing with Steve Pope, especially now that we're not owned by the family that was very interested in what was on the editorial pages. He doesn't do that. He's very respectful of the tradition of the newspaper, which is nice. I don't have any idea where this publisher stands, what his politics are. He doesn't impose them on me. He, uh, you know, he's more concerned with us being respectful and having a, a reasonable voice and listening to other people in the community who, and acknowledging Who their. actually writes the house editorials for your paper? Now, you say you've got five writers. <coughs> Do you one, take one a day, or is it just which one your people are most interested in? Do people actually sign up and say, I'm going to write this one? It's generally um, Alicia and Chuck write the bulk of the editorial. Sometimes I'll write one. Sometimes uh, David Arsani will write something. Um, it's and it's. I largely try to pick what people are most interested in because they'll write with the most passion. When I was an editorial writer, we had a bigger board, and sometimes I would write editorials that I didn't necessarily agree with, but they were the house's opinion. It was the Denver Post opinion. It wasn't my opinion. It wasn't my column. My column, which has your little picture on there, has your name, is your opinion. And you get to say anything the house, you want. Right, there. you're writing the house editorial position. And in, in the springs point. and other papers. You, do you write the majority of those house I, editorials? I do now, since we went into bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> We've had. You, you actually, I'm doing you more actually deliver the paper as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm delivering it. Sweep up at night. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm doing more writing, I think, than I've ever done in my life. I like that. Uh, when I started there, we had a bigger staff, and I had uh, a, some, an assistant editorial page editor who did a lot of the writing. I do most of it now myself. I do have someone who assists me, who is also a very, she's a very good writer, and... Uh, writes when she can uh, and other than that uh, when when I'm not writing the editorial which is pretty much every day of the week uh, we will pick up stuff from our flagship sister paper the Orange County Register in uh, in California because and it saves cost it saves cost and they have a they have a staff more like Dan's I mean it, it sounds like it's almost identical in size and they typically every day have an international, national, state, and local piece. And uh, on their international and national stuff, there's no reason we can't pick that up. We have the same guiding philosophy. So, so we pick words, up a lot of stuff. You're going to beat up on Obama, and they wrote it, you, you can use it. Yeah, and sometimes it goes the other way. They'll, they'll pick up stuff that we wrote, or you know, we have about 90 newspapers throughout the country, and we all share. Because right now, even though that family no longer controls the paper, all the same people are still in place. The tradition survives. So we're all pretty much on the same page. So let me ask you about how this has changed. Because in politics, you know, my job is to get to guys like you and, and try really hard to get you to say something. And if I'm a rich candidate, I really, w or somebody who's got a lot of money, I really want you to say something because I'm going to give I'm going to get poll quotes from you, endorsed by the Denver Post, and I'll pull out. The Denver Post says this. Now, I've never had any money in a campaign I've run to be able to do that, but I know people who want to get those quotes. When you're doing those editorials, do you think, particularly when it comes to an endorsement of an issue, a ballot issue, or a campaign candidate, um, do, do you think about, oh, this one's going to end up on a postcard? I know it. Is that is that the way you, you think? You know, I really don't. I don't know if anybody else does. I try. Not, I don't even. I, I kind of forget about that and really just look at the issue and you try to write it in such a compelling way that you can sway somebody to your side. Now one of the things we do is we get them out early enough that one voters will, the editorials out early enough that voters will have a chance to consider it and also knowing that for it to be effective it needs to be used in advertising and things like that so you don't wait until the last minute like we used to do the Sunday before knowing with early voting and that people people's behaviors are different now we try to get them out early but I never think about well this is a really good line that's gonna end up I'm not a, a copywriter for you know advertising I don't know yeah there's, some, there's <laughs> money in there I'm telling you I mean I may be uh, yeah, one someday but yeah. I'm not currently one <laughs> just a matter of weeks <laughs> I'm telling you especially after this I love it when that happens, and it, it and it. I never think about it when I'm doing it, but you will. You, you'll endorse a ballot measure, and then you're sitting down at the television set at night, and all of a sudden here's your, you know, a paragraph from an editorial you wrote, and it's sounding awfully the familiar. The Gazette says this is a great that, idea. <laughs> did I write that? Mm. Yeah. And so when that, but but that's excellent when that happens because it's free publicity for the Gazette's editorial page, and we're not going. We're going to get it either way, if we're for it or against it, somebody's going to pay to put it on television or on the radio, if there's money behind either either side of it. 
So you don't have to think about but it. It's going to happen. But by They're having a major <laughs> newspaper, either yours or yours, endorse something or come out against it, it adds, as you say, this, this veneer of legitimacy. Well, you know, mm -hmm. it's funny. I, I find where I think we really have our biggest impact is sort of the lower ticket races. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody has ever voted for president of the United States because the Denver Post or the Colorado Springs Gazette told them that this candidate was good, this candidate was bad. They kind of have an idea. But people are busy and they don't have time to go through and talk to these people like we do. We bring people in for interviews, the editorial process. Right. Candidates come in, explain their issues. We talk about public policy all day. I'll get phone calls from people who will say, you know what, I don't always agree with the Denver Post, but I generally do. When are you going to endorse in the school board race? Because they want us to say, hey, look, we vetted these guys for you. This one's a crackpot. This one believes in, you know, charters or something else and is a good person to vote for. And it's, keep, it keep it's mind, easier. A newspaper well, once endorsed me. So but we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do Fair that. enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> we endorsed the felon, I guess, huh? <laughs> you might have. The, uh, I think the legitimacy that people get, when it, I think that our credibility is actually going up with the world of the blogosphere and everything because we are kept in check by that, first of all. The reader now publishes on your page right along with you, because you know, especially on the internet. It, it, it's they comment on everything you write. Yeah, and sometimes you write an editorial and there are 300 comments that day. Uh, and if you get something wrong, you're going to be called on it. And there are consequences when we get, when guys like Dan and I get something wrong, our jobs are on the line. Yeah, when you guys so get something wrong, right. we're not bloggers. We're not, it's true. Know, I mean, when you get something wrong, like like Amendment 23 or Fast Tracks or FC, <laughs> yeah, there are consequences. It, it destroys it's our state. There. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the kind of consequences yeah, you have. Still working, isn't that right? <laughs> isn't that amazing. I still got a job. So I'm, I'm imagining the, at your desk there's this like red phone that has a plastic or, or a glass cover on it that just comes from Dean Singleton, whatever jet he's on at the right. day, calls you up and says, today, this is it. This get is called there yeah, get, get, get called. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about letters to the editor, because that always seems to be this, this amazing thing that nobody seems to get. Now that you have the internet, it seems like you get a lot more on, online, but as far as seeing your name in a paper, a little, what, what do people have to do to get a letter to the editor other than sending you one? Is there magic? Do you have to agree, disagree? There's, there's who, not magic. Who, who, who here, here's, here's a few things about how we handle it. One, I'm more willing to give uh, the opposite side of, of the, the coin, the, thing, the people who are arguing against us, who don't like our editorial, I'm more willing to give them space because I feel like we've had our say and it was a big headline and lots of words. Right. So I'm more willing to give them some space in the paper. Um, so we try, but we try to balance it every day and try to find interesting things. So you find a little package, and you know, we have space for about seven letters every day. And you just try to find the best letters every day that represent what's coming in. And it's difficult to do because you want to make it look fair, right? So if you're going to run four, four letters, you want three on one side, one on the other, but you want it to be a representation of what comes in. It's not an easy process. Um, what we're trying to do now with the internet, though, is to get more things online. Letters that don't make it in the paper, we put online. We're also culling our comments section for possible comments that we can add to our letters page and say here these came from our online section because as there's more people have more outlets now to right. respond to things and not just letters to the editor every story has the the writer's email address so a lot of people are now writing to the writer directly right. and not writing letters to the editor so I've seen our numbers go down a lot over of death the years. threats and by the way I think that's one of the best things <clears throat> papers do is when you have a contact for the reporter right. so people call them up yeah. and but, got but it we wrong. want people to, to continue to send letters in because that's part of the community forum and one of the things I like about it is we require you to put your name and your hometown on there. So to me, there's some of the best opinions we have in the paper because people have to stand up and stand behind there and not just call names right. and, right. and you the know. The comments section is not like that. Most newspapers don't require a name and verification of address and all of the stuff that we do with a letter. So a letter is a much more credible feature in the paper. Right. And I'm amazed at how many we still get considering the fact that you can just go online, make up a name for yourself and pretty much say whatever you want. And you have all of these opportunities to mass communicate.